Good morning friends. In the hydraulic calculation video, we are going to size a fire pump for the high rise building. The building consists of basement plus ground floor plus uh, 13 stories. Like you see here, the height is 43 meter and this is the isometric drawing I have given for the building which consists of the, all the sprinklers, then alarm check walls and also we have the zone control wall assembly will come. So, uh, as per NFEA, there are some rules like what are the fittings we need to consider and uh, what are the fittings we don't need to consider. So, uh, there is a full list of uh, full list also there. So, we will see what are the things are there and also we will do the hydraulic calculation from sprinklers to till the all the way the pump and we will decide what is the pump size in my last videos of chapter 1 part 1 we discuss about the occupancy classifications with a few examples and uh, the difficulty of the difficulty, uh, difficulty to choose the occupancy classification and in the chapter 1 part 2 video uh, balance occupancy classification and what is the concept of death zone in the sprinkler protection as per NFA 13 and density area curves and it changes changes from uh, 2019 version to 2022 version so now in this video we are going to see mainly how to select the height hydraulic area because there are some uh, practical difficulties will come when selecting the hydraulic area I will show you a few examples also and uh, I'll tell you the answer also then we will see how to uh, do the hydraulic calculation for a high rise building in the last video I explained about the ordinary hazard extra hazard concept and also we discussed the death zone for the ordinary hazard and now we have one more thing light hazard light hazard it comes with two different category non combustible combustible we will quickly see this one and we will jump into the calculation okay so uh, in the non combustible combustible and also one more items are there obstructed and unobstructed okay based on this one the production area is different so what we will see what is this one then we will uh, you know that how to finalize this so here first uh, if you see here non combustible material as you know it will not uh, ignite it will not burn or support combustion or release flammable vapors okay when subject to fire or heat for example the brick uh, stone concrete blocks so all these are comes under non combustible material when it comes to combustible material a material is uh, a combustible material is a material that can burn in the air under certain conditions like wood paper these things will come under combustible material okay so the category here first is whether it is non combustible uh, like you mean, like you see here it is non combustible or combustible okay so you have to finalize first this one after that you have to see it is obstructed or unobstructed construction or unobstructed construction okay so obstructed means any construction like beam trusses or any other structural members that affect the ability of sprinklers to control the fire to control or suppress a fire and impede heat flow okay so uh, uh, sprinkler will be activated when the um, the burning fire reach, reaches that point okay so the heat flow should not be disturbed first of all and also it should not disturb the sprinklers water discharge so these two things are important if the, if, the, if it is uh, disturbing that one means it's a obstructed construction and in unobstructed construction the same like opposite this one that doesn't affect the sprinkler discharge capacity and also it doesn't impede the heat flow that's all so now we will see what is that unobstructed so like you see in this image obstructed means suppose you consider the sprinklers are here sprinklers are located here the distance between uh, one structural member to another structural member should be uh, up to 7 feet 6 inch okay that means it is obstructed if it is more than 7 feet 6 inch the distance between here to here then it is unobstructed like you see here so like you see here the structural members one one here and next you can see the next one here so there is, if the distance is more than 7 feet 6 inch mean it will come under unobstructed and the next important thing is it is a horizontal structural member not the vertical columns okay the obstruction and one more thing openings are at least 70 percentage of the cross-sectional area suppose consider this is the arrangement we have one uh, structural member here one structural member here and this uh, this height is uh, 0 0.5 meter and this height also 0 0.5 meter that means uh, the total uh, uh, total area of this one will be 0 0.5 into 0 0.5 0 0.5 it will be 0 0.25 Okay, total it will be 0 0.25. So here the area is 0 0.25 meter square. Okay, so here the point is openings. That means this open area shall be at least 70 percentage of the cross section area. So the cross section area is 0 0.25 means the openings should be 70 percentage of this cross section area. So if you if you combine all these things, then it will go to unobstructed construction. 
and finally from here if you see non combustible or combustible and here uh, non combustible directly will go to hydraulic and pipe schedule so we can decide the sprinkler spacing and uh, uh, production area if it is combustible means we have to uh, see the three, three category like it is no exposed no exposed means it's not visible not visible that's all so exposed and here exposed two conditions are there more than three feet less than three feet and here it is again obstructed unobstructed and here the other categories are there based on the slope we need to see here okay so if it is decided then we can finalize what is the maximum spacing and sprinkler production area so now we can start the calculation so consider we have a office building with two basement plus ground floor plus seven this is for the example so uh, you know as per the uh, as per the density area curve if we have the light hazard then we have to consider 0.1 gpm per feet square light hazard 0.1 gpm per feet square and the hydraulic area should be 1500 okay because the same uh, y direction if you see here it will be 1500 okay this is the minimum value if you see the maximum we can consider 0.07 gpm per feet square and the hydraulic area 3000 okay so we need to consider either minimum or maximum and as i told you in the last video in the earlier section like uh, earlier uh, uh, 2019 nfa 10 nfa 13 2019 till that one we have the option to select the density uh, anywhere between the curve but uh, from 2022 we can select either minimum or maximum okay so that's the rule so from the chart we need to select the maximum spacing so it's a light hazard and it's a non-combustible unobstructed one and we are going to do the hydraulic calculation so the maximum spacing is 225 uh, maximum production area is 225 square feet or 20 meter square for one spindler and the maximum spacing is 15 feet or 4.6 meter okay so following that i followed 14 feet 14 feet uh, 14 feet between the uh, all spindlers and from the wall to the spindler it should be maximum half of the production area like uh, half of the maximum spacing so here it is 1 by 2 time 1 by 2 into 4.6 it will be or uh, here 15 feet 15 feet uh, into 1.2 it will be 7 7 feet so that's the rule i followed from uh, wall to the first sprinkler and after that all sprinklers are followed with the 14 feet where we have the maximum of 15 feet okay so next one is as per nfea the length of this hydraulic area i mean from here to here this length should be at least 1.2 times the square root of the area of the spindler operation okay so here uh, as we saw now the hydraulic area for the light hazard we consider 1500 square feet okay so the length is equal to 1.2 times square root of this hydraulic area so we need this one to decide the length here and here we have two ways to decide the hydraulic area first you know 1500 is the our hydraulic area and second suppose consider this uh, this spindler this spindler is 14 feet uh, this direction and 14 feet this direction it is spaced properly okay and all the spindlers here are placed properly with 14 feet into 14 feet so what we are going to do we will take the pro uh, production area like 1000 uh, sorry hydraulic area 1500 uh, divided by what is the space uh, what is the production area of one spindler that is 14 feet into 14 feet that means 196 feet so that means we have to consider total 7 7.65 spindler so we cannot uh, consider a uh, half now so we'll make to round off that means 8 spindler so we need to consider 8 spindler in the hydraulic area so this first rule is applicable if you have the spindler with the proper spacing like you what you see here uh, but unfortunately suppose you are in your site you have the room like this okay you have the room like this so what will happen you cannot place the spindler properly like a uh, correct spacing so one spindler will be like this one spindler will be like this so the distance between the spindlers is not same uh, all I mean all the spindlers is not same like what we saw here so in this case you cannot follow this number of spindler rule and at that time you have to verify you are properly complying this 1500 feet square as per the nfa 13 instead of instead of making the number of count of spindlers okay so in our case we did 1500 divided by 196 so we need to do eight we need to consider eight spindlers in the hydraulic area so how i consider one two three four then following that again four here okay so total eight spindler i consider and now we need to see the length and width so as per nfa the length should be 1.2 times root of hydraulic area the hydraulic area for our case is 1500 so if you do the calculation like root of 1500 so let me show you here so 1500 if you take the root 38.7 i have to multiply with 1.2 
so it will be 46.47 i round up to 46 feet okay 46.5 feet so that means this 46.5 feet will be from here to this one that should be the length okay in our case how much we have 7 feet plus 14 14 14 again 7 so total it will be 56 feet so we need 46.5 feet and i have 56 feet so i need to adjust that one in the width now so here total i need 1500 so I'll, I'll mention here 1500 uh, the available space is 56 feet so the balance is 26.7 feet okay so 26.78 feet so this should be the width here we need to make sure this is the minimum width available here okay so in our case how much we have 7 feet 14 again here half we need to consider 7 feet so total 28 feet we have available we need 26 feet so we are complying to the nfa tightening requirement okay so total we need to consider 56 feet from here to this area and again width we need to consider 27 feet so this is following the yeah, this is complying to the nfa 1500 square feet so the overall uh, general concept here is the width should be 20 times 20 percentage 20 percentage higher than the length okay so we need to know why this concept comes from so if you see here many older hydraulic area was considered in the form of square after because the concept is fire don't usually burn with the precis symmetry because if fire happen mean we cannot expect it to be exactly semicircle circle or rectangular square okay but if because we cannot decide that one but fire that burn in a rectangular fashion have a high water demand so that's the important thing so nfa 13 changed its requirement from the square to the rectangle with its longest side is 20 time 1.2 times the square root of the area of the application that means 20 percentage higher than the length the width should be 20 percent higher than the length okay so the longest side of the rectangle is measured in the direction of the branch lines okay it should not be measured in the the cross point should be parallel to the branch line so like you see here we measured the longest side this is the branch line uh, parallel to the branch line not perpendicular to the branch line okay so we should be we should measure the longest side only to the parallel to the branch line and another very 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 important thing is this 1500 square feet is our hydraulic area and there are three conditions we have if uh, if any of the three condition applies we have to increase this hydraulic area with some higher percentage so we will see what is that so here for the quick response spindler the area should be can be reduced as much as maximum 40 percentage okay.